Hello. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I should rather be saying hello, namaskaram, vanakam, bonjour, guten tag. <laughs> yes, I'm being this annoying person because I don't speak any of the languages that I just said hello in completely, by the way. But I think it's a good precedent to set because today we're going to be talking about languages. And I'm just going to let a couple of more people to join in. Hi, Puneet. Hi, Joe. Hi, Savi. Hi, Kavya. Hi, Swapnil. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in. And um, yes, today we, we're actually going to be talking about languages. The reason why I had chosen this subject was in between there was news that was circulating and it's been quite a while that it's been happening in India that they were planning to make Hindi as a common language across the country. So kind of uh, one national language which is Hindi and there was a bit of an outrage especially in the South Indian states where they speak mostly Dravidian languages. Um, even though English is spoken quite dominantly as well in India, we are very multilingual as a country but having one common language to unify the country was proposed. Uh, it didn't people didn't go ahead, the government didn't go ahead with it and I really wanted not only an interculturalist perspective to it but a linguist's perspective to it and apart from that as well I think language is such a powerful medium of expression. Right? I, we express love, we express hate, we if, if there were no words we wouldn't literally have an identity so a lot of our identity is also derived from languages and that holds true when we also speak about diversity not only within India but across the world as well. So I just felt it's a very important aspect to focus on and I also watched the movie Arrival. So if you haven't watched that movie I would really urge that people go and watch the movie Arrival. Um, I've written down the theory. So there was a theory that was proposed in Arrival. It was called the Sapien Whorf theory. I'm very bad with names. So the Sapien Whorf theory suggests that the language that you speak in determines the way you think. So imagine if, if I'm speaking in a certain language that influences my decision making because that also involves thinking. And imagine in a country like India where people are speaking different languages as their mother tongues that influences the way they think and then that also brings in diversity as a result brings so much diversity in thoughts as well. So this is a very, it, it's, it's a theory but it does hold true for me personally too you know because I when I'm when I'm thinking about work I think in a different language when I'm praying I think in a different language when I'm thinking about my parents or talking to my parents I speak in a different language so I, I'm also constantly switching languages based on what behavior is kind of expected out of me so that's a very interesting perspective and also from an Indian perspective we have 22 official languages that is part of the constitution but we have 122 other languages as well so you know, to give a perspective of diversity and what that means uh, to people from a sense of pride, from a sense of expression, I thought a linguist would be able to give uh, a, 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 a perspective to that as well. So today I will be actually joined by Ishita Re. Uh, Ishita Re is a learning professional of the 21st century in her own words and she's actually you know, conducted learning programs in languages, intercultural communications for uh, organizations and corporates. And she's actually been part of Tata Consultancy Services in intercultural communication and the languages department. And she's also been uh, teaching in affiliate institutes affiliated to the Delhi University. Um, she breathes languages, she loves languages, she's learned languages and now she's teaching them too. So I thought this was this would be a perfect guest to have for such a topic. So I'm just going to add Ishita really quickly.
imagine going out with your college friends imagine a dinner table conversation even in one single sentence we sometimes go between two or three languages and effortlessly we're not even thinking about it yeah now like extrapolate yeah it's like a reflex and now extrapolate that to your neighbors to the society to your professional world to it it just keeps growing so that's mm-hmm. what diversity and linguistic diversity to me is in india it is so enmeshed it's such a lived experience so it's like from dinner table conversations to boardroom presentations it's all very intertwined that's what mm-hmm. it is to me i agree with you there actually because i think it's such a lived experience for us you know diversity we are born especially if you live in a in a multicultural city like bombay i grew up here so i grew up around many different cultures as well because when i go for intercultural trainings especially i see a difference in how intercultural trainings are perceived by an indian audience who have a lived experience of interculturalism compared to somebody who's from france you know so for them yes there's a different level of interculturalism that exists there but there's also very fun unified idea of what culture means in that country too but here they find it almost unnecessary because they feel it's second nature to them to be adjusting to or switching to different cultural contexts or different languages so yes i completely agree with you there but then you're talking about the differences in languages i mean in 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 india historically the states were divided based on language so tamil nadu is tamil nadu because they speak tamil maharashtra is maharashtra because they also speak marathi and the same goes for karnataka etc punjab too so you know in a country where states or people were clustered together based on the language that they spoke and then taking that to you know this suggestion of having one common language across the country to go down go unify the country do you think that's possible for a country like india or is is that recommended i recommend it is a very heavy word but i I'd, i'd want to know your thoughts on it as a linguist and as an indian <laughs> also right so one thing about uh like you rightly said in a country as diverse as india the moment we talk about unifying in terms of language it is always one at the cost of another so if if you mm. choose something the very the very moment you choose something for anything it is that you are not choosing others so then what are you choosing and what are you not choosing like yes so if i choose to speak in my mother tongue that means i'm choosing not to speak the other five languages that i know yeah. right so it's it's a, it's a choice and when like i said when you make the choice for something that is as consequential as an entire nation mm. it's 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 far more than the simplistic way we look at it as unifying a country or dividing it it's 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 far more than that and uh, you know in, in fact in fact the other day i was i was reading this book and you know the op- the opening lines in the book and 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 i'll read if you uh, if you'll allow me there's this quote uh, it says that you know it it talks about the self and it says that you know my soul is like a hidden orchestra i do not know which instruments grind and play away inside of me strings and harps and cymbals and drums i can only recognize myself as symphony so you can't have symphony with one instrument <laughs> you need all the instruments for the symphony that is india ah oh, that's beautiful that's beautiful and holds true i see personally yes i feel that definitely holds true because yes we have our strength because we have that diversity and we should give credit to that and you just you you beautifully put it in that quote for sure uh, but i was just i was recently talking to a person who works in tech 
but is also a comic book writer. And he mentioned that there, from a very economical perspective, you know, there are a lot of um, engineers in the south of India, for example, who lose out on certain opportunities in the north because they, there's no one language that's spoken and then that works vice versa. So from a very economical perspective, then it must make sense to have one language so that it's easier to interact like, like China. You know, they, are, they speak one language and that makes it one much more easier. Of course, there are nuances there as well. But, and I, and I thought that was a great perspective too. And that, that's the first time I thought from a different angle. But then it made yeah. me think, if, if he's speaking from an economical angle, you know, India is now the fifth largest economy in the world. And we are growing. And we've been growing since 1992. Uh, from a modern perspective, if you speak. And we have such linguistic diversity. And we've existed in this in linguistic, linguistic diversity. We've thrived in it. Now, economically, we are growing as well, irrespective of ha having so many differences. So, in your opinion, how do you think the world in general, not necessarily the West, but the world in general, what, what can they learn from how we've kind of made this weave and this symphony work for us? I think the first thing that I will say that um, we can definitely set an example for is that there doesn't need to be a contradiction between being culturally and linguistically flexible or global in that sense, and yet to be rooted in your local. Because we do that so much as part of our everyday lives that, you know, for example, we can, you know, we would be in, you know, we can be in meetings from people from across the world. And, you know, I do that. I'm sure you do that quite a bit. And you know, we would be, and, and we can be, are, you know, this bridge people, we can be culturally, the cultural cosmopolites in that sense. And I think we'll come, come back to that uh, a little later. Uh, and yet, I can be doing that sitting here in my small town home in West Bengal. And when I walk out, I can still interact with my grocery store owner in the most local of the dialects. And the two don't need to, and, and the two don't need to conflict. And the two do not need to conflict. I do not have to go beyond my culture or I don't have to be a different self to be able to be culturally flexible and to navigate across cultures. I can be the international and I can be the local. So that's one. And the second thing is, I think, in this time of after we've seen this absolutely global pandemic and the acute climate emergency that we are living in right now, we have to recognize the strengths of collective societies like India. That to be able to do anything, to be able to make any difference that is worth its metal, we need, we are, we as human beings, we are social primates. We are not meant to be individualistic. We are not meant to be alone. We are not meant to survive <laughs> on our own. It's a controversial statement. For yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's not saying it, it has its own benefits. Everything has its own advantages and disadvantages. But what I'm saying is it is time that we recognize the strengths of this collective society as well. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, yeah. we, the, the, yeah, and, 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 and this coming together, the way we've seen, for example, the medical fraternity come together to come up, you know, to, to, to fight the, the pandemic that we had, it, it, it required collaboration and collaboration in the global world today requires navigating across cultures, navigating across languages. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's where I'm coming from. It's mm. not discarding one. That's what I said in my first point. There is no con contradiction. It is not discarding one for the benefit of other. It is this and that. And it's time we recognize the strength of the other side as well. Yes. I, I, I agree with you there. 
However, thinking of it from a very executionary standpoint, from a daily standpoint, we grow. Being in India, we grow up in, you know, different languages. So I know these languages because I grew up hearing them. Sometimes I didn't have an option but to speak in those languages because I had daily interactions with people of certain communities that only spoke that language. But in countries where there is, you know, a single language, um, and for the world to kind of, like you said, you know, this noble cause of the world coming together, then do you suggest that people start learning more languages? Is that an option, in a sense? It's okay. It's not as simplistic as that may be mm-hmm. but it is definitely worth the effort for example what i am trying to say is the moment we go to a territory that is unfamiliar mm. our our mind tells us that resistance is the first thing that you know we will not do this we will not go beyond this that's mm-hmm. a, that's our first that 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 again that that's what makes us human what i am saying is the more we open ourselves to the possibilities mm-hmm. that's what helps us collaborate it doesn't always have to be me learning a language for me to be able to collaborate with you who doesn't speak any common language learning the language might be a long term and a and a path of most struggle there could be path of lesser struggles as well as long as i'm open to the fact that i need to build a bridge it's a building bridges that is important to me as a linguist yeah step one is yes recognizing it firstly that the bridge needs to be built and being open to it being open to change being open to acceptance accepting of things that are different from yourself but you know these these are these are things that are at a very macro level we're talking from a very world view point of view uh-huh. uh, but you know funneling it down to something very everyday you know in our day to day lives or within our country itself for example there is so much mobility happening so taking bangalore as an example has become the silicon valley of india and there are so many young uh, professionals moving there so and the same the same happens with people from south moving to the north but one of the main issues they face is integration within the culture and one of the main barriers is language that that's that's one, one of the main barriers that keeps them from in, integrating in a culture because at the end you're moving to a new city a new place not only to work you have to thrive there you have like you said we're you know moving into a world where every people communities need to come together in order to thrive so how what would be your suggestions considering even you have lived in a linguistically different um state and country if i'm not wrong yeah. than your yeah 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 so you know, what advice would you give to such you know people who who, who want to integrate through languages but also not lose their sense of self and identity right so uh the first thing that i would say as someone who has like you said lived in other states that speak different languages and also in another country that speaks a different language um mm-hmm. i feel that one learning another language or just being in another community uh with a different language and culture seems very threatening at the surface level it's it's a very threatening experience i remember the first time when i started even dreaming in french uh i freaked out uh, what's happening i i i i see my parents in my dream and they're speaking to me in french like what is that supposed to even mean okay so so it 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 causes it causes uh deep dilemmas mm. and deep struggles and one should not lose sight of that but what it does if one sticks to and this is something i will say from experience if one believes in it okay learning a language is not reducing yourself it is expanding yourself it is transforming yourself so what what eventually happened is i i i needed to learn 
I, I I actually wrote handwritten letters in Bengali back home so that you know I I wouldn't forget. But also at the same time, I let myself, you know, mingle very openly. In, and I lived in a for the first time I went to France. I lived in a small town in France. There was no other Indian. Mm. Okay, so I had to speak, breathe French in and out for everything. and it could have been a very very threatening experience but it wasn't mm. it was a very liberating experience and once and so my advice is at the very micro level i know it is difficult and i'm not asking everyone to learn that language that is not the point here but if you're even open to the idea that the person who speaks another language and culture is not a threat to your sense of self you've already made a big name and so even sharing you know your you know do you have sugar do you have tea and you know inviting each other over and you know in office when you're in the canteen you don't have to literally be in your own in group you can invite that other person over or you can walk over to the other person and you might even be rejected mm-hmm. it's not always but to you yourself believe that it is possible it can be such a life changing experience and it will expand yourself and that i can vouch for yes i, I agree with you there and that and i especially that was a strong statement that you made when you're learning a new language you're not reducing yourself you're expanding yourself because especially when you get into adulthood you have such a strong self of self and you know, you you believe in what uh your idea of who you are is because you know it's a learn it's learned as time passes and as we are exposed to more things and more content you it 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 can um uh, make you feel lost but at the same time it can also help you find yourself in the sense that you know what i am not at least i know that <laughs> Yeah. and it's a very important thing that you said one of the things that you discover when you are in a different environment than you are familiar with you actually discover yourself and your own language and your own culture in a far more deep way than you would be that when you're inside it's like a fish living in the water right when you're in the water you don't know what you what you're living in you take it for granted but it's when you have the birds eye view is when you see it and and that's what happened to me yes yes and you know, i i went with and i i almost i have a feeling i mentioned this in every episode you know even for the uh, advantage of your audience <laughs> i'm going to repeat this example again so when i miss when i went to normandy that's where i came from it's a small town but it's very close it's a small state it's very close to the uk and it's very close to paris as well and like of course everybody in paris can speak english it's a cosmopolitan city it's an international city and of course everybody normally will speak english because it's so close to the uk you know because here i speak a bit of gujarati because we are so close to gujarat and even in france i mean the state alsace it's close to germany there are many people who can speak german but i think it's something to do with the language itself like the french don't really like the language english which is understandable and comes with a lot of baggage and history but you know especially from the perspective of my assumption of what cosmopolitan is in france and it's uh-huh. a cosmopolitan city so of course they speak english and i had this uh, same idea for cosmopolitan cities or metro cities in in india you know that uh there always is a common language that people end up speaking in a cosmopolitan city as well so your yes we largely do speak hindi we speak marathi also when we are interacting with government officials here in, in in bombay but then we largely for interaction we do end up speaking in hindi or if, if you're you know speaking with a person who speaks english and it's english as well but still considering that there are so many different cultures you end up finding a commonality so then what does even the idea of cosmopolitan mean 
right and then what <laughs> is this relationship to language because the whole idea of cosmopolitan is that there's differences there are different people coming together but then you end up speaking a common language you end up having a common culture anyway so what is that idea and what does that have to you know what is how does that affect language right so first of all this idea of a cosmopolitan is i mean who is a cosmopolitan okay first of all it is someone who has that ease to navigate across differences in say culture countries languages whatever you call it right mm-hmm. now it's a very interesting thing you ask that what is being a cosmopolitan in india and what is that even when you say we end up finding commonality that commonality differs for example when i was in hyderabad you know i didn't speak the language i didn't speak telugu but hyderabad in uh, so a large part of hyderabad does speak hindi uh, mm. but when i was in formal environments like in official environments in my university or in, you know i had to get paperwork done the language always ended up to be english mm. in the official spaces in the formal spaces and after having lived two two and a half years there i moved to delhi and i was like okay so i am again in an in a higher education space okay i i i go to you know banks and offices and you know in the, in the delhi university and i automatically have the reflex of of starting off in english and complete blank responses like people are not even looking up to look at you okay and it took me a little while to understand what was going on because the code had changed and you know like you said it if it you know it it has to be then it had to be hindi and so so even a cosmopolitan and and then the hindi changed it's like it 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 is not the same yeah it's not the same hindi and even between even living in delhi and cr what you spoke in south delhi vis-a-vis what you spoke in gurgaon mm. um you know in the passport office for example is so what do you do with that so who what is linguistic cosmopolitanism i mean i, I you know what what is it I I don't have an answer. Sorry, I am not the expert. What I'm just saying is that again, so again we're talking of this whole diversity. It was I think to put simply in the in the words of my grandmother, you know, who never stepped out of a village in her whole life. It's like if you go to the next village the language changes. So what are we even talking about? Mm. So yeah, so then what i'm inferring from this is that from a indian perspective the idea of cosmopolitan doesn't really exist or maybe the cosmop the idea of cosmopolitan exists everywhere everyone is a cosmopolitan in that sense yeah i mean you know my mother uh, she interacts with this uh, press wala who's a bihari and in all these years he continues speaking to her in hindi and she continues to speaking to him in uh, bengali that's how they interact like regular conversation yes. and each one my mother understands hindi and he understands bengali but they will not speak the language and yet they and that that's how every interaction has happened for the last 20 years that's not even a joke <laughs> yeah so he, he, so they are cosmopolites they are cosmopolitan people for example i mean my my dad he came here around 35 years ago he came to bombay from karnataka and i'm a shetty so the shetty community is very well known to run bars and restaurants so there are certain types of bars and restaurants here in bombay almost all of them are run by shetty so he he speaks hindi and it's been 35 years yes but then there is it's not the same fluency with which he speaks the mother tongue so when he came here his foot in the door with the community was the fact that he could speak the language so he didn't really 
require even living in bombay you didn't need to speak any other language because the community for which he came here you know there was interaction happening so again irrespective i think 35 years in bombay i can call him a resident of bombay he still finds his roots in karnataka so for him he's always going to be a south indian i'm born in bombay i'm always going to be introduce myself as a south indian i'm going to be asked oh shetty are you a south indian i will agree to that so <laughs> i was like raised in bombay but i'm a south indian so I, yes i think that idea of cosmopolitan can be very is very um there's no clear definition so there's no clear line there is no clear definition and if i can just add one line like i said earlier there also need not be a contradiction you can be as much a cosmopolite as you can be a local as you can be very rooted you can be as spread out as you can be rooted and i think at least from a linguistic and from a cultural perspective there doesn't need to be a contradiction and that is what as a linguist i find myself i, I find it very fascinating that discovery has made it totally worth it yes Ah, this is amazing. I can go on and on, <laughs> but I know we are <laughs> short of time. So, uh, before I let you go, I wanted to understand from you if there is e- either from a perspective of your profession as a linguist, or either as you being yourself. You know, I for me, mm-hmm. there do my profession and what I am personally as well. If there's one thing that you would want to change. either within or outside yourself what would it be and why i start and end with heavy questions no <laughs> i yeah well it i don't know about change but there's mm-hmm. something that is very core to me and i i think i would like to uh i think i try to do that but i think i want to keep and like increase my degrees of doing that and that is that i would like to for everything for my profession for my life and for everything i would like to learn and not assume i think as a linguist and as an interculturalist for you we are far better off when we are learning and when we are not assuming when we are in the unfamiliar when we are in uncharted waters uh you know it's i would always go to the side of education learning curiosity yes with it can be okay not to be learning and just assuming yeah yeah and also not so very yeah that's great and it sounds very obvious it sounds very obvious but you know it's our it's the human mind the first thing we jump at biases we jump at what is it at the end of the day we are making judgments all the time we are biased all the time it's because we have not made the effort to learn because learning is effortful and i think that's what i've been talking about in the last <laughs> half an hour learning is effortful whether it's a language whether it's learning you who you are it's effortful so i would like to learn and not assume you have given like somebody just responded learn and not assume and your quotes i think we there are so many little little nuggets in this i i want to share them separately uh but thank you thank you so much thank, thank you, so you prata it was really great i i loved this conversation with you thank, thank you so you. much for having me and i think we should have a longer conversation after <laughs> we should so absolutely bombay yes and oh before you go if you want to share your you know where people can find you where they can find your professional work if there's anything that you'd like to share okay so i am on linkedin and my profile is ishita ray i think that's the easiest way to find me and of course on instagram uh, i'm not much of an instagram user but uh, my profile is ray.ishita and uh, my uh, i'm also there i'm a, well i think i think linkedin is the easiest way to get in touch with me right. okay that's all right yeah. thank you yes donon that was a very good conversation indeed <laughs> people are responding so thank you
Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.